So we have a few questions from our campers that we're hoping you would be able to answer for them. Um, so our first question is, how do you decide where to dig? That's an excellent question. Um, we don't just guess. The world is a big place, and if we were just guessing where fossils might be, we might miss them. There's a lot of places where there aren't fossils. But uh, good places to find fossils are places that are open, where you can see things. Places where you have the kind of rocks, sedimentary rocks, that are formed by water usually, uh, where animals would die and be covered over by mud and sand. Uh, so uh, those are good places. And we, we have increasing technology these days. We use satellite images and we use aerial photos, but we also go back and look at old publications where people have worked before and found fossils. And we talk to geologists and we ask geologists, how old is the earth in this place? If we're looking for dinosaurs, we need to be in, in places where the earth, where the rocks are at least 65 million years old. So there are no rocks of that age, uh, you know, no rocks of the proper age for dinosaurs in Michigan. So we would not waste our time looking for dinosaurs in Michigan. We would go to Utah or Montana or Wyoming or Texas, places like that out in the West. So we really want to look for places where geologists have told us that it is the right age and places where fossils may have been found before. and then. Uh, places where people may have published fossils from those places before. And uh, obviously we want to go to places where uh, there are fossils that will answer the questions we're trying to answer at, at a particular time. Thanks. Thanks for that. Our next question is, um, are you the one who digs for fossils? Another good question. So yes, sometimes it is me. And sometimes it is not. I've been very fortunate to go on expeditions uh, with members of the museum, with curators in the museum, to places as far away as Pakistan and Egypt, um, and also in the Western United States. I've worked a lot in Wyoming. Um, and I've worked on my own looking for fossils in places like Kenya and Turkey, Uganda, South Africa. Congo. Uh, so I've been to a lot of different places and done a lot of searching for fossils and a lot of the field excavation of fossils, including that beautiful Basilosaurus that, that is now on display in the Natural History Museum and the Doradon. I helped excavate those specimens out of the field in Egypt. Um, now, I don't always go to the field because we're a very active program. We have a lot of curators and I'm needed in the lab. So sometimes I receive things in the lab that other people have excavated, uh, mostly curators and graduate students and research scientists. And when those things come into the lab, they come in plaster jackets. They're completely covered over to protect them and we don't know what's inside of them. So I'm like a little boy at Christmas when those things come in the lab. I don't know what I'm going to see. It's very exciting to open it up take the top off and see the fossils in the plaster jacket. So sometimes I go to the field, sometimes not. Uh, when you are, um, when you're on a, how often do you find bones on a paleontology dig? We're pretty fortunate. We have a pretty good idea where, where, where we want to go, where we want to look. I've never been on a, on a, on an expedition where we didn't find something good. So I, uh, I've been lucky. I, I think the success rate has been 100%. <laughs> Do we always find exactly what we want? No, sometimes we have to keep going back and change our search image a little bit and look in an adjacent area and look in different areas. But generally, we're pretty lucky. We generally find something. Um, some exciting things, obviously, the whales that you see on display uh, from Pakistan and from Egypt, those were very exciting expeditions. Uh, to go to China and find big giant relatives of elephants in the ground, that was very exciting. We, we found a fossil ape uh, distantly related to ourselves in an expedition to Turkey. That was very exciting. So yes, 
we generally find something, but that's because we, we have a good search image and we do our homework before we go. If you're doing amateur searching, you don't always have such a high success rate, but it's still exciting to go and look. And there are a lot of places where kids can go look for fossils. There are a lot of places where avocational and amateur paleontologists can go look for fossils. And I would encourage anybody to go look. And if you don't find something the first time, don't give up because the world is full of fossils and you will eventually find something pretty exciting. Our next question is, what kind of environments do you find fossils in? Uh, these are all great questions, and it's clear that the kids are thinking like young paleontologists. So oh, yeah. if you wanted to find fossils, a bad place to go look for fossils would be a forest or a jungle because they're covered over in vegetation. There's a lot of plants and trees that are probably covering all of the rocks that might have fossils. You wouldn't see any erosion in those places, so the rocks wouldn't be eroding away by water and wind and fossils sort of being exposed. So you wanna to go to places like deserts and dry areas and areas where there's a lot of erosion going on. Um, my, my father thought that I was a very silly man to go to Egypt in the desert and look for fossil whales in the desert. He said, hey, it's dry. There aren't any whales where it's dry. Well, that's true today, but it's dry there today. But in the past, there was water in that place and there were whales there. And now that it's desert, there's a lot of wind and the rocks are eroding away and the bones are sort of being exposed on the surface. So you wanna to go to places where it's easy to get in there and see where the bones are coming out. So we like working in deserts, open areas, savanna areas, um, areas with a lot of erosion. Sometimes we take advantage of things that are happening in the environment around it. So, uh, for example, uh, if, if somebody is building a highway, we often are very interested to see when they're making a cut through rock to, to, to extend the highway because they're doing the hard work for us. And a lot of times when roads are being built, that's a good time to go and find fossils. And sometimes road crews will tell us, hey, we found some bones. Can you come out and, and help us out with this? Um, other places to look for fossils might be uh, where a farmer is cutting down through the recent soil in plowing. We call that the plow zone. And sometimes they hit fossil bones underneath the, the surface soil and, and expose those when they're plowing. And I would say probably a lot of our fossil mass mastodon material in the museum probably was originally exposed that way by farmers who were plowing and they got underneath the recent soil into Pleistocene soil from 10 and 15 and 20 and 30,000 years ago. So sometimes you have to work with other people to find fossils as well. 